Hi, my name is Sierra Drew, and this is my 2019 climb of the Sierra High Route, a year that saw 230% snowpack. What is the Sierra High Route? It's 195 miles of cool, crisp, clean, clear mountain air, 115 miles of cross-country traversing, and 38 mountain passes. The High Route isn't for everyone, but if it's for you, I hope that you go out there and get it. Also, just so I know whether or not I'm supposed to keep making videos, please subscribe and hit the bell notification below. As of this video currently, I have no subscribers, so... Well, I guess that's that. Join me as we tackle the high route together. Came into Tuolumne Meadows the next morning and wanted to... Uh, Actually, I wanted to take a zero day because I'd put in an 18-hour day the day before, so I wanted to do a zero to all the meadows. Uh, but one, it was Sunday, uh, and their post office, and two, uh, they weren't going to open until tomorrow, until the next day. So I kind of walked four miles out of my way for nothing. Refreshing. So I came down to Twomley Meadows to hopefully get like a candy bar or something like that. And they open tomorrow. So there you go, honey. I don't always make it right on time. Sometimes I'm just a little bit too early. So anywho, I am about to head out now to go up and over Vogel Sang Pass. I was just gonna like relax today, but you know, 20 minutes in the river, some good calories, good sleep last night, and you know, the lakes feel brand new. So, hey, why not? We'll just see what we can get done today. So, in a perfect world, we're at the base of Blue Lakes Pass by the end of tonight. And that's about 20 miles from here, and I've already hiked four, four and a half. So, that'd be asking a lot, 24 miles on day three. So, we'll, we'll see how it goes. That's it for now. Oop, there's my ride. No, I'm just kidding. I'm not getting it right. Um, I had a good time in Tuolumne Meadows and just kind of relaxed and enjoyed myself for a while. And then it was uh, back out. I decided to see, well, let's see kind of how far I could get that day. Um, I uh, kind of bumped into a few different little critters along the way. I bumped into a little marmot, uh, a little monk marmot guy, doing a little photo shoot pose thing for me it was pretty hilarious the trail was actually pretty rough in certain spots the snow snow doesn't really do well when you mix snow and trails better to be snowing off-roading than snow and on-roading I guess so um, yeah we're here and then I'll we'll get the Vogel thing pass here hopefully after lunch I'm gonna do that full backpacker food thing and try to sleep for an hour and then we'll head on out again because I want to do this next section here in the daylight so all right, we'll see you in a bit. So I just got into like a shouting match with a marmot where he was basically just kind of creeping, creeping on my campsite here, lunch site, whatever. Anyway, he'll probably show back up. He's, he's living right underneath there. Now I'm aware that I am in his territory. However, this is also the best spot, which is probably why he lives here too. So he feels that he gets to I would have said steal from me, because marmots are generally thieves. I suppose it's probably more of a marmot tax at this point. Like, hey, I will let you be here, but just know I'm going to steal some of your crap, and it's going to be without prejudice. So you don't know what you may not have when you wake up. So yeah, are marmots thieves, or are they uh, tax collectors? I'll let you um, decide. Yeah, I came up and over going through a Vogelsang Pass and, and you know, there were supposed to be trails all the way through and once I got to the Vogelsang High Camp, I realized no such luck. It was going to be sun cups for me again. So I'm at a Vogelsang Pass. Yeah, no trail. It was, would have been nice. It was all sun cups, so it took forever. Uh, concerned that getting down see back there it's kind of all the same in fact all I see is the phone reflecting sun cups 
man. Endless. I have a feeling this is going to be the story of my life for quite a bit. And I can't save all the passes for morning because there's three to four passes a day. So that eliminates that idea. <clears throat> uh, but I'm trying to save some passes for morning, like Blue Lake trying to get there sometime in the morning. So, Anyways, that's it for Vogel saying pass. Yay. Cups to get up and over Vogel saying. And when I got over Vogel saying, I, I just remember thinking, like, this is just a normal trail out in Yosemite. So if you want to get a, just a small taste of higher out, but you want to still be on trails, the Vogel Sang Pass down to Florence Creek. What's going on? I'm at Florence Waterfall, Mosquito Town. Anyway, look at that. That's a big waterfall. Also, good news. I learned how to use like Photoshop on the phone. So now I can take like kind of cool pictures with my phone. So, yay, I'm super excited. I'm all sunburned. Ah, look at me. Peace. Whoa. Uh oh. Nah, we're okay. Okay. So, Florence Waterfall, and I learned how to use Photoshop on my phone. It's a great day. That is a great way for you to get the feeling. These are, these are trails that, that aren't really traveled a whole lot. Florence Creek Waterfall is, is absolutely stunning. I think one of the most underrated uh, waterfalls in terms of ones that I've heard of. And uh, it was just beautiful, you know, coming down there and, and coming down that canyon, the, the meadows were, were real pretty. And, and I just remember thinking, okay, like this, <clears throat> this is pretty cool. And I'm, I'm, I'm making my way down got some interesting photos I'll kind of put them up here for you and, and I thought they were real pretty uh, real fun I had, a, I had a real good time uh, down in Florence Canyon went to bed I knew that the next day was gonna was gonna introduce uh, Blue Lake Pass well just about to go off-roading here um, we're heading into Blue Lake Pass if that's sun to kill us or not uh, Blue Lake Pass just out back that way um, yeah, looking forward to getting off the trail. Honestly, it's kind of been kind of boring. So, looking forward to getting out there. Blue Lake Pass was kind of the beginning of my, uh, I don't want to call it a come to Jesus moment, but that moment when you realize, what have I gotten myself into? Well, I'm walking through the land of sun cups here. As you can see, it is, that's it, man. Just like three miles of sun cups. Anywho, <clears throat> my new $180 trucking pole uh, just broke, but it broke at the lock button. So I think I can just roll some tape around it and kind of bandage it up. So if you see it later on, it's got bandages because it broke. Now normally coming from the north, Blue Lake Pass is actually probably one of the more milder passes. You kind of walk across this nice field normally, and you'd go up this nice rock shoulder normally. But in my case, it was 100% smooth. Okay, well, I thought I'd take you guys with me to the top of Blue Lake Pass. There ain't nothing but snow up here. All right, this may be a long one. You may not necessarily want to hang on for the whole thing, but this is what it feels like to be a 30 miles deep in the backcountry where nobody is on some random pass. This is kind of what it feels like. So. Uh. Snow is soft, which is good and bad. Bad because your feet stay wet all the time. Your little case of the boot rot. Good because if you fall, you probably won't slide very far. On the way up this mountain, I broke a trucking pole, which I think I showed you earlier. And, uh, let's see here. Oh. I strained my Achilles, I think, so put a compression sock on it and threw it in a wrap. There she 
Yes. Oh. Yeah. You can believe how hot it is up here. There it is. So narrow. I mean, holy cow. Oh. Okay. See you now. Bear went over the mountain. See what he could see. The other side of the mountain. Oh, 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 yeah, oh, 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 yes, look at the minarets, oh, they're spectacular, woo, blue lake bass, done and going up it it was just so much work and I broke my trucking pole um, through the middle of going through Blue Lake Pass and just whew, it was just really 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 rough honestly tweaked my ankle I think for the first time on Blue Lake as well and when I got up to the top of it, the, the realization of just how much snow there was gonna be. By this point, I had already walked maybe 10 miles of sun cups. And I looked out over Blue Lake Pass and I saw that I was gonna have to walk sun cups pretty much all the way to Mammoth, about 30 miles. Finding my way down Blue Lake Pass uh, with the map, I thought I thought was almost impossible. It was uh, first of all the views were stunning. It was one of the most beautiful things I'd ever seen. It, if Blue Lake Pass got its name for for the photos that that are showing you here, I mean, wow, I get it. There were two sides to the walking in snow part that I want to talk about. One of them was. Yeah, yeah, the snow was terrible, and it was very hard, and it was really difficult. Okay, so I took no notes, apparently, on how to get down from here, but the summit is way up there. You have to go down and around this ridge, then come down and around that one, come down that, over here, and then down through there. And apparently, I told myself, like, I wrote nothing in the book. It was like, it was like a line that said, good luck, have fun. It's ridiculous. It was so hard. Every damn day on this route is like the hardest day I've ever had in the mountains. Like every day. It just never lets up. So hard. Um, anywho, sprained my knee just a tad on the way down. My Achilles on my left heel, so hurting a little bit. Um, I think my lips are chapped or sunburned or something. <sighs> but all in all, I'm actually right where I wanted to be at the end of the day today, so that actually puts me like five hours ahead of schedule. So, not all bad news. Not all, not all bad news bears. Um, what do we got left here? We got this, this little saddle here. 
Yeah, so we're gonna come up here, over there. Then there's these two big mountains right over there, Ritter and Banner. Um, that I had these like wild aspirations that I was gonna like have all this extra time and I was gonna like take a day to climb them, and, you know, relax or something. Dude, bro, not a chance. I'm learning that on this, on this climb there, it kind of is no extra credit. Like there's just finishing and enjoying the journey. Because if you're if you're just doing it to say you did it, this is not this is not this is not the trip you're looking for. That's where I'm at. Feeling a little vulnerable, a little hurt. My feet have been wet all day too, which sucks. Anyway, there's a story from Bench Canyon below Blue Lake Pass. But one of the best things about walking in the snow is the fact that I got to see some of this terrain that you normally just never get to see. Every lake that I saw had that kind of iceberg blue tint and the sky was just clear. It didn't rain on me at all this entire trip until the very last night uh, coming down Copper Canyon. Um, and what a privilege, I mean, to be able to see the snow. And that was just how I took it. But all I can say is, is boy, my feet are wet. And uh, my knee hurts, and I'm tired, and I miss my wife, my kids. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but coming down Blue Lake Pass was outrageously difficult. It was hot. It was sun cuppy. It was afternoon. It was, it was tough. My ankles were just, I mean, rolling them left and right over these sun cups. And then coming down into this, <laughs> into this canyon, back behind Thousand Isles Lakes and, and Banner and Ritter, coming down into this, coming into Bench Canyon, I kind of thought to myself, wow, well, this is supposed to be like one of the most epic meadows in the Sierra Nevada. And I, I mean, I didn't see it. All I saw was sun cups. Made it out of Bench Canyon. That place right there. I heard that it was like an epic meadow, but I don't know. All right, so what's next? What's next is back here. We got Banner and Ritter. And I'm trying to shoot that gap right there. North Pass. Uh, officially going for 12 hours today. Uh, I think I got about three hours left. Uh, that terrain looks really tricky, honestly. So, but it looks fun. I mean, that's some some real deal mountaineering right there. So, all right. Well, I have no idea when we'll when we'll talk soon, but we will. We will. Uh, that being said, am I ever going to do the high route again? Um, I might do it on a year with low snow, just so I can see.